I think we have the opportunity in any of our work environments to contribute. Um, when we take our our platforms that we build, we spend so many years building up our platforms and our networks and our careers and our professions and our image or our brand. Um, at some point you can take that and funnel it into something good. It doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to dedicate your life to it, but you can, you can take it and pull some goodness out of it. <clears throat> whether it's fashion, whether it's music, whether it's film, you know, we're always, we're always reaching a different group of people. And those people turn to us to be moved, to, for us to tell them stories on whatever platform you use. And so I would just encourage everybody to, to take that platform and use it for something good at some point. Hi, I'm Trina Peak. I'm creative director and founder of Obaki, and this is Design to Speak. I think in general, in the charitable world, people are tired of seeing the same thing. You know, they want to be a part um, of the world, and they want to help, and they want to contribute, but A, they don't, they don't know how to help to start, or they don't, um, really want to be bogged down with the reality of what's happening and I think by using fashion and other creative arts we're able to show them the same world situations or the same things that are going on around the world um, but in a creative way, a way that they can be a part of it without actually being you know, depressed. They can be inspired by it, they can be moved by it, they can be uh, a part of it on a different way than they have been given opportunities to do so before. So. Um, for me, being able to merge the two and have um, fashion and philanthropy come together, it's really just this engaging, inspiring platform for people to be a part of it. The cause usually comes before the collection. I think in my early years of design, I was looking at it from a different perspective. Um, I would go into, uh, I, would, I would search for that inspiration. I, you know, as a lot of us do, you're on you know, the internet, or you're watching movies, or you're reading books, or you're in art galleries, or you're, you know, just kind of combing the world looking for where that inspiration is going to come from. And um, I think at a certain point, I, and I can get inspired by those things, but at a certain point I realized, you know, I was searching for that inspiration. And I was on a plane ride back from uh, Africa and feeling all of these things and, and just, um, just being really, really inspired from my experiences um, being there. And then I just, it just kind of clicked with me at one point. And I'm like, you know, this is where I'm drawing my inspiration. Why not take that and put it into my craft? And so um, that's where it all sort of shifted for me in my mind. And I realized I didn't have to search for inspiration. I would take what I'm naturally, what naturally moves me and work with that. And I think that has really significantly changed my work. Um, the reason I chose Cameroon and I chose South Sudan was really because my path led me there. And I think a lot of us sometimes walk around the world trying to, uh, you know, force something and to try and, you know, look, look for a purpose or look for meaning. And sometimes all that just kind of finds us. And if we just go with it, then we're, you know, we, we end up in this place where, you know, you were meant to be. Um, and I know that sounds a, a little kind of out there in a way, but um, it's really how I was called to South Sudan. Um, I had never been there before. I had um, really had no experience or communication with anybody from there, but for some reason I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I would uh, feel that I needed to go there. And it's really something I can't explain. I think sometimes we choose our path and sometimes it chooses us. So.